is indeed a delight to welcome you to another River Landing conversation. I'm Jim Kalaki. I'm here with Kay Heflin, and we are well on the way in our spring series, and we have a terrific guest for you today. Tom Sears is a River Landing resident. Um, my favorite thing, I think, well, one of my, I have many favorite things about Tom, but one is that um, if any of you had children in the Greensboro, greater Greensboro area in um, probably the 60s, 70s, 80s, and maybe into the 90s, um, they may know Tom from having straightened out their teeth because Tom was one of the foremost orthodontists in uh, the neighborhood. And um, the other thing he has achieved great fame and um, uh, appreciation for is his work um, in Old Salem in the Winston area and his knowledge and his own construction work in the area of American furniture in historical American furniture. And you will hear much more about that as this conversation goes along. Tom, welcome. Thank it you. It is a treat to have you here. Thank you. And um, we'll start maybe with, uh, we, all, <laughs> we usually start with something like a nickname or uh, uh, where did you get your first name or something like that. And Tom is um, a reasonably common first name, but you're not, a, you're not a reasonably common guy, so well, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm Thomas Jr., uh, and I, in growing up, I uh, was called Thomas or Tommy, and now that I've gotten older and since my daddy passed, I'm, people call me Tom for whatever reason. It's, it's, he grew into the name. Just um, the, the what now? It said you grew into the name. I grew in, yes, yes, I did. I, yes. I grew into it, I guess, <laughs> yep. over time. Yep. And you're going to keep it now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I am. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Tom, where are you from and where did you grow up and what favorite memories do you have about childhood? Well, my daddy, my daddy graduated state in 1934 with an agriculture degree in he became one of Roosevelt's boys for the next 39 years until he retired in the agricultural world. And so we, from that, uh, moved too many times. So I was born uh, up in Wilkesboro, where my now deceased wife was born. And um, we, I was in West Jefferson, which is up in the northwest corner of the state, uh, for the first almost 10 years. And uh, Sarah and I were in the first four grades together, actually. And then I moved to Apex for four years. And then I moved to Greensboro for two years. And then I moved out in Gifford County. So I was moved uh, more times than it was. It's not fun to move that many times. So I decided to, by the ninth grade that I was going to either med school or dental school. Uh, one, because I like science. And I, and I, I wanted to be self-employed. And so that the kids that we were not able to have would not have to move that many times. Yeah. So what led you into the field of dentistry then? I don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, I just, um, I'm, I knew I was pretty good with my hands and I proved that when I got into dental school. And uh, uh, I just, I wanted to be self-employed and, and uh, not somebody tell me where to move. Mm -hmm. And uh, I enjoyed working with people and, and it turns out that what I picked was something I had a particular gift for and uh, so it was very satisfying. Mm -hmm. Did you have a particular mentor that kind of led you in that direction? Not in, not in the dentistry, but okay. But uh, uh, when we moved to Apex, my position, uh, was Dr. O.S. Goodwin, who also, uh, ironically, was my Sunday school teacher during some of my, some of my junior, junior department. 
and he uh, had a tremendous impact on me. I, during that time, they determined I was allergic to eggs, and I was at Duke when I was six years old for a week in second surgery in my life. And uh, so I, I'm, uh, he just had such a tremendous impact on me uh, as an individual. And, and actually, nobody can believe this, but he, uh, this was 1953-ish, and he decided that he would like to teach us boys in Sunday school about the birds and the bees using oh. a book that he had. <laughs> and so he, he, in his busy life, stopped by different people's homes and checked and showed the parents and said, I would like to just introduce these young men to facts of life <laughs> using this book in Sunday school. And of course, parents said, yes, that's great, do it, <laughs> yes. Take it off our shoulders. Yes, yeah. so, you, that's good, do it. <laughs> so so, I, so Dr. Gilman uh, had a phenomenal influence in my life. What types of activities did you do when you were younger? Uh, well, I stayed in trouble a lot, but uh, <laughs> um, I tried to play, I was playing some ball. My, my parents did not consider playing ball a worthwhile uh, activity, so I, I played baseball and basketball under protest, basically, <laughs> which made it kind of hard to achieve <laughs> yes. at a very high level. But uh, um, I wound up pitching and playing third base in baseball. And then, Tom, I remember, I think, from earlier conversations that you, you ended up in your undergraduate life at Elon. I did. I, I, I was one of seven nominated out of this county for Moorhead at Chapel Hill, and I lost out in the semifinals, so I went down, money was an issue, so I went down and talked to him at Chapel Hill and told him I thought I was interested in dental school, and it's, you know, senior in high school, mm -hmm. <laughs> optimistic, and uh, the, the head of the admission to Chapel Hill said, well, Elon and Guilford College both have outstanding science departments. And so I contacted Elon and became a day student the first year, actually, because uh, we lived about 12 miles away. And uh, drove my 29 Ford Coupe down. <laughs> and uh, uh, I studied very hard and, and um, looked at all my schedule and left out freshman history, believe it or not, <laughs> because I needed, I needed to get the science courses really packed in. And... Uh, and so my, in my early in my junior year, my daddy said something, made some comment about I had not taken my freshman history. And, I, and of course, I was taking all these science courses and labs yeah. day and night. And I said, Daddy, I think I can place, if I don't get in dental school in three years, I can pass freshman history. <laughs> and I got in dental school in three years, so <laughs> I, studied, I started studying history later uh -huh. when yeah. I got interested in antiques and all. So. So that's where I got my history lessons. And you probably, mm -hmm. I suspect, with all due respect to whoever was teaching uh, freshman history in 19 whenever, right. that you probably learn a lot more later on well, than you might have. In, in, I, I've got a little carried away with it, and so it's, <laughs> it's kind of got out of hand. <laughs> yeah. So since you ignored history right. initially, how did you establish this love of history that you have? Well, um, Dad, Daddy never, it was, it's in my genes, I guess. And uh, we, we had um, a desk and bookcase that uh, my father had bought in 1937 when it had a family sale. And uh, it had books in the, full of, full of books in the top part. And we moved it each time we moved, and Daddy always told the movers to be careful with it. Uh, but it never really studied it. And so um, after mom and daddy passed, uh, my brother and sisters decided that I was the best one to, to have it. And so I proceeded to study, start studying, and I determined that the desk was made uh, by a cabinet maker, Thomas Sherrick, down in Bertie County, eastern North Carolina. Made somewhere around 1780, 85. There's almost identical copy in the historic Halifax Museum. I determined that uh, uh, the books in it were, were from mostly my great granddaddy, Mason, last name Mason, um, and who had a, 
about a thousand acre plantation, which is now most of it under Lake Jordan. Okay. Property that should be my brother and sister's <laughs> under Lake Jordan, unfortunately. Uh, another story. Uh, and so I started uh, studying and I figured out uh, what, uh, you know, the desk and bookcase, the origin of it. I found out that my five times great granddaddy um, uh, brought it, William Mason, uh, yeah, William Mason brought it from Bertie County to Chatham County in 1797. And uh, then the Sears side of my family moved down from Tappahannock, Virginia in, six, in 1752 to right outside of Chapel Hill. So I went, I've been putting all this together. Wow. Quite Gosh, a project. Quite, quite a project, yes, yeah. indeed. Get a little carried away. Mm -hmm. So t tell us a bit about your, um, how you evolved into making furniture and building. Okay. Um, they, I, I'm, again, I, I built a little, I built two little cars which I called hot rods when I was in Apex. So uh, I have, uh, you know, it's a little tiny car that I built and took an old steering wheel that I have in the garage right this minute up there, <laughs> uh, that I'd gotten off of an old car from the 30s. And uh, I'd built it with a, a, a big handle and pulleys and ropes and so forth. and. So I built, I actually put tandem wheels under it because I like trucks. <laughs> so so I, I was doing this stuff when I was 13, 14. So, you know, it keeps me off the streets, uh -huh. get in trouble. Right, right. And then the furniture well, I, and, and after then the, that. Well, and so we, I took, well, what got in some trouble, I took Sarah to an auction. Uh, a few months after I finished my residency in 1970, up in the mountains, where where we she grew up and where I was the first ten years, and it was the Ray family turned out the most important early family in northwestern North Carolina, and this cherry pie safe came up for sale, uh, that had some tin, rusty screen wire and ends because the tin had rusted out, and Sarah fell in love with it, and so. I told her not to raise your hand or scratch your nose unless you, you know, she'd never been to an auction. Well, she raised her hand. I'm like, okay, what's happening? <laughs> so we wound up buying this cherry pie safe, which um, we've since restored. I still have it. It's in our house in Old Salem in the basement. I determined it was made by George Washington Ray, that it was made around 1845. And uh, so it's just kind of, things went downhill from that. I just got <laughs> And then I determined we, we, we had bought some very rare important chairs, uh, Annapolis, Maryland chairs, uh, 1985. And I just, intu intuition, I'm very intuitive, and I made a decision to kind of stick a neck out big time and bought these very rare chairs. I then started doing the research on them and so forth, and so they're fixed to do a muse museum article that's going to include me since I did the research coming up here shortly. Uh, and uh, so and then after I retired, I decided I wanted to try to copy them because they were had a construction details that were very rare and rather difficult to make, which made me more interested. Mm -hmm. And so I took three different week-long courses from a gentleman down in the eastern part of the state. And uh, after that, I decided to start to get into it. And I've since made, is it, Pretty exact copies of them, and uh, um, then I last year I sold my old chairs to a, uh, a gentleman up in Virginia who's restoring a huge plantation up there. So I enjoyed them for 30 years, and now they enjoy them. Nice. So you mentioned that cherry pie safe was in the house in Salem. Right. And I think some people here have had the experience of being able to see that house. Why don't you tell everybody else a little bit about it? Well, we, uh, we've we been involved in Old Salem since uh, 1973 at the Museum of Early Southern Decorative Arts, which I guess is coming up on 50 years, matter of fact. And uh, uh, in 2010, we were asked to buy 
the Bagley House, which is a 1787 house on the square in Old Salem, mm -hmm. facing the water pump. And I, you know, like I need another house, but uh, I, I just can't seem to help myself, so I just had to do it. So, so I'm, I'm, I hadn't been there since this morning. Uh, and <laughs> so, uh, I just enjoy historic houses and architecture mm -hmm. and all that. And so, we had copied the, the John Bugler House in, in 1977, 78 in Greensboro. And I'd taken a historic interior out of a house built in 1815 in Gifford County that had a fancy painted interior. And I took, disassembled the four rooms that had been vacant for 30 years. And one room is the Greensboro Museum and the other two, three are in the house that I sold in Greensboro. So I've, I just, I've got to work with my hands. It's just, that's. That's Something that's in you, huh? It's yes. in me. Yes. The other piece of work that I know that you've done um, with your hands um, was through your church, where you've done some very significant um, trips both overseas and here in the country. Right. Can we hear a little yeah. about those? Well, the, the construction-wise, I've done a bunch of uh, construction trips with our church as far up as Wheeling, West Virginia, and as far down as close to Augusta, Georgia. Uh, I've done, since I retired, I've done a number of weeks of those. Um, uh, I've also done two medical dental mission trips to Chile, 16-day uh, trips where we, it takes a day to go down, a day to get back, and but we're working with the Mapuche Indians who are the native DNA similar to American Indians, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, have been pushed down to the bottom of Chile. So we fly to Santiago, and then we got to fly 800 more miles down to the very bottom of the world. And so I was down there. Uh, they had had no care, and so we, a group of us went down, and um, luckily I'd done a lot of surgery in the Army when I was in the military, because uh, that wasn't my specialty as an orthodontist. But, but, uh, I was able to, to do dental surgery on people that had had no care, had no mm -hmm. x-ray, so we had anesthesia, uh, antibiotics, a lot of prayer, <laughs> certain skill, and we did a lot of work. Right. And were you a team of, of yes. dental professionals? We had, we had uh, three dentists, we had a physician, we had a veterinarian because we were working with the animals. Mm -hmm. Um, so we were working with the, the whole group. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. And we should also bring up those of you who may have watched our interview with Harvey Loud a few weeks ago, heard us talking about the award of the Longleaf Pine, which is presented by the governor of North Carolina periodically. And interestingly enough, for all the work he has done, Tom Sears is also a recipient of that award. So belated yes. congratulations, yes. because for those of you that don't know, it's the highest civilian honor that the governor of North Carolina, any governor of North Carolina, um, can bestow. And I just, I mean, just to be sitting here with you, <laughs> and what we were sitting here with In her, royalty, was, right? Yeah. Wow, yeah. this is pretty cool. <laughs> I'm, yeah. it, I'm, I'm very honored. I've also... Our Rotary Club, we've done a tremendous amount of work with Camp Carefree, which is the camp that's north of Greensboro that works with handicapped kids. Yeah. And so our Rotary Club um, has spent days and days and days and days of construction work uh, over, over there. And of course, that's what I enjoy doing. So that's since I retired, I've just been doing everywhere. <laughs> So, so there's been no sitting in the rockers and I, I don't, thinking about I, the I past. I don't do rockers well. I don't, they, just, <laughs> they, they don't fit me too yeah. good. <laughs> Very busy retirement. Well, I but, just, I've been blessed to have a lot of energy and um, I was very sick as a kid and thanks to miraculous healing and Duke University and so forth, I've, I've been very healthy as an adult. Mm -hmm. And so I just stay busy. So um, uh, we, we, I grew up, 
idle hands of the devil's workshop. So, uh, we were reminded of that. So I'm trying to stay out of trouble. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. And succeeding brilliantly. It's well, I'm trying. Yes. I'm trying. Yes. I'm trying. So, Could we go back to Chile for yes, sir. a minute? And, I'm, you know, we hear from time to time of people like you and lots of others who go overseas. But could you describe just briefly what, what an average, if there is such a thing as average, day was like there for what you were doing? Okay. And, how, and how you as a serious outsider from you know, thousands of miles away could um, both fit in and have your work appreciated so that people weren't either, I don't know, scared or who is this outsider coming to do whatever. Could you talk in that okay. context a little Good bit? Good point. Uh, Tomuco, Chile, if you look on a map, which is way down at the bottom, is, is a, a, a town city in southern Chile. Uh, the Baptist from Texas built uh, a facility in the 1920s in Temuco and went down and started doing mission work there. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a lady from our church in Greensboro, First Baptist, uh, who had been down there for like 20 some years, uh, and she's the one that basically got us to come down. Um, and the natives of Chile, which are the uh, DNA equivalents of American Indians, uh, were pushed on to basic reservations circa 1880, very similar to here in the United States, uh, because most of, most of Chile, most of, as best I can determine, South American countries are mostly run by Europeans at this point, uh, and for a long time. And so we just, uh, we knew through our missionaries and contacts that they were desperate in, desperate in need of care and were basically being ignored. And so we put together, we contacted the drug companies and they said, okay, we'll give you antibiotics and, and anesthetic uh, that's toward the end of the dates, you know, mm -hmm. still okay, but toward the end of the dates. So we had massive amount of that. And, uh, and then we just went down with prayer and skill and prayer and skill <laughs> and work. Yeah, what kind of facility? Yeah, what kind of facilities did you stay in? What kind of what facilities? Were you in a home or? Well, that's another interesting story. Uh, the uh, uh, the all time worst was we were at a, a second facility that was done a mission that was put in by people from England uh, in the 1930s. Again, in this same general area, uh, and they actually had a dental uh, a dental office. And the, uh, there was a native Chilean dentist there that was not seeing any patients and watching the World Cup, <laughs> but would not let me use his, uh, his uh. office. And so I set up in a shed. This is a wintertime down there. I, we were, I set up in a shed in a chair with some four by fours that I had to prop up so I could work from. And we, uh, one day I saw 37 patients, surgery patients that day. Wow. I was exhausted, but that's my most productive mm -hmm. day. But they were so thankful. They just, you know, we, we, we're taking care of abscess teeth and so forth and, you know, draining areas and giving antibiotics and so forth. And they just, they're so thankful. It's incredible. How oh, nice. Yes. Wow. It just dawns me. It, do you know, is, is First Baptist in Greensboro still, does it still have that Chilean connection? Yes, yes. Not, not, not every year, but, but we, we have been known. Uh, First Baptist, interestingly, did, uh, has done a lot of work in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, we've had teams going out from First Baptist for years yeah. and uh, in different areas, yes. It just strikes me that a fabulous project here would be to get to, to collect information from area churches 
about who's doing what mm -hmm. in programs like this, both domestically and internationally. All right. I suspect there are some people, well, I know there are some people here um, who are continuing to, right. to do Work. very nice and good and private ways right. in some cases, either work or contributing mm -hmm. to it right. or whatever. <laughs> and that would be, River Landing, it seems, could make a great yeah. service, not just for us, but for other people around yeah. if, if that information were sort of collected in one place. Right, right. There's a project for someone who... <laughs> there you go. No, it's a big commitment. And for example, when, when I was in Chile, um, you know, I'm still paying my staff here in Greensboro. So uh, it was a, a significant financial commitment mm -hmm. each time. I mean, it's, it just is. Yeah. So. <laughs> but very satisfying in every way. Great. Good. So, since you've been t at River Landing for what about two years now, two and a half? You're putting I'm sorry. You've been at River Landing about sorry, two, two and a half years. Uh, December of 2019, so yeah, yeah three plus yes. years. Yes. Big surprises as far as life here at River Landing? Uh, no, I'm very thankful that we are here. Uh, Sarah got lost three weeks after we moved here because I had a my back was hurting from all the work I did growing up and so forth. And uh, uh, so that's when we first determined we had a possible issue. So, mm -hmm. so we got here at the right time. So most of my, I've not been as active here as I would normally be because I was, I've been taking care of her. All right. Then that time. Um, but very thankful that we were here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good place to be. Yes. 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 One of the questions that we ask all of our guests is if you could be with people past or present in your life or in time, it doesn't have to have ever been in your life, and spend some time with them, who would you like to spend time with? Um, actually, and I'm... Um, I heard Harvey Lamb's thing the other day. Uh, he mentioned Jesus and Joseph, and I think both of those are people that, that for example, uh, uh, I, I was raised in the church and, and actually walked down the aisle in, ba in the Baptist world, you make a decision by yourself and not on age. So I, I chose to be baptized at age nine in West Jefferson. Mm -hmm on my own without any consultation to my parents. So um, I've, uh, I've th those are th individuals that I find um, fascinating in every way. Surely. For example, mm -hmm. um, I'm uh, people that, that again, um, Dr. Goodwin, the gentleman that I mentioned before, mm -hmm. just I'd love to talk to him at this point, but um, he, he um, when I applied to Dell School, or when I went for my interview at Chapel Hill, I found out he had, he had, had on his day off, had, uh, half day off, had gone over the week before and said, uh, I was hoping this boy would go to med school, but, it, but you need to take him. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just very honored that I had an individual that was like a, a second father. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I've been blessed in that sense. Right. Yeah. I can just imagine if there was the opportunity for you to have that conversation today, then mm -hmm. how excited he would be to see what you've done yes. since the last time uh, yes. you were together. Yes. It's, it's probably, and he could just sit yes. there and say, hey, yes. Wow, yeah. yes. good job. Yes, it, uh, I'm, he's certainly a role model in every way. Yes. Very nice. Um, Tom, as you thought about this session <clears throat> before we, we sat down to visit, um, are there points or questions or ideas that you thought might come up or should come up uh, that haven't? 
In other words, what have we forgotten to ask you? Or to, <laughs> no, to I, I, I admire, not because I'm sitting here, I'm honored to be sitting here, but I admire what y'all are doing. Uh, I've told people about, uh, some different people about the Free University of River Landing, <laughs> and they'd like blink their eyes, and I said, you know, uh, and I, I explained to them some, and uh, so it's, uh, and then the extension work that you did, that my daddy did, that goes back to Roosevelt, et cetera. So uh, it's a matter of, of identifying and caring for other people uh, and reaching out in different ways. And um, I find that, I think that this, our communications and this type of thing here uh, is synergistic in, in uh, maybe encouraging other people. Good. We hope so. <laughs> we hope so, too. Yes. I think it is. Yes. Yes. I think it is. Good. Well, thank you for coming. This is just thank a lively you. and terrific conversation. And, uh, and I think well, one of the things I'm learning is we, we're getting towards the end of this uh, series for this semester, but um, the number of people who are, you know, will stop and say, oh, I saw your thing last week and whatever. And occasionally I've got to go, what are they talking about? Yeah. Then, um, <laughs> but it's just so exciting to have the likes of you and Harvey and all of our other visitors on here because um, it, it just demonstrates, I think, what a not only what an interesting place this is with its interesting people, but the, the useful work that's going on in the world that often we don't hear about right. as much as-, as Well, I, th I think we're, what y'all, we are more synergistic in, in encouraging each other and working with each yeah. other. And this is very different from your typical retirement home. Yes, yes. this is a movement place. That's right. Yes. Right, and I think it's wonderful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you all very much. Great. Well, we'll just continue on being <laughs> wonderful. So thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, thanks, we should also say, to Ariel and Sydney, who were our producers or co-producers today. And we look forward to seeing you again next week in another Riverlanding conversation. Good afternoon. <laughs>